Welcome, everybody, to tonight's Cleveland Kronzvania. We have two great presentations for you tonight. The first one begins now uh, with Adela Pukul uh, at the Celine Ethnographic Museum in Ljubljana. And she will pre be presenting on traditional carnivals in Slovenia and their changes over time. This presentation will conclude with a short film about the door-to-door -door rounds of Corinti in Slovenia. And then we will follow it with a live Q&A. Adela is um, coming to us from Slovenia, and I look forward to chatting with her and um, getting her to answer some of the questions that I hope you guys will be posting in the comments on our YouTube and Facebook streams. And then again, our, our second presentation of the night begins at 7.30, and it will um, cover the topic of Slovenian dual citizenship with Alenka Jirik, our Council General of Slovenia here in Cleveland. And again, that begins at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. I'd like to give an introduction for uh, Adela. Adela Pukul um, is at the Slovene Ethnographic Museum, where she is a museum counselor at the Department of Spiritual Culture. Adela has published many academic papers and curated several presentations about Corinti, Corintivania, and traditional carnivals throughout Slovenia. Adela was involved in inscribing the Georgia door rounds of Corinti in the UNESCO representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity. I have had the great pleasure of meeting Adela in person a few years ago when she was here in Cleveland for Cleveland Corintivania. Um, she did a presentation that was covering Corinth masks, and um, it's like seeing an old friend again. I look forward to our Q&A session at the end of this uh, presentation. Again, we're streaming live on our YouTube and uh, Facebook channels. And if you have any questions or comments that you would like to share with Adela um, or uh, with the audience at large, please feel free to enter them in the comments on YouTube and Facebook and we will um, get those to Adela at the end of this. And now, without further ado, please welcome Adela Pukul from the Slovene Ethnographic Museum for her presentation, Traditional Carnivals in Slovenia and Their Changes Over Time. Spoštovane dame in gospodje, voščim vam en lep dober večer in vam pošiljam pusne pozdrave iz Slovenije. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and carnival greetings from Slovenia. Let me start my lecture with a photo I took last year in the field, and it shows how everything is changing, including carnival customs. The photo shows a puppet named Carnival, which the Skoramati make every year to announce the carnival time. And it was already marked by the coronavirus last year, but the carnival season was still unrestricted. Unfortunately, everything will be different this year. The Slovene Ethnographic Museum is a museum about people for people a museum of cultural identity, a space of dialogue between past and present, between our own and other cultures, between nature and civilization. It takes care of Slovene and non-European collections of objects, social and spiritual culture, and their safeguarding, research, identification, documentation, understanding and communication. Since its foundation in 1923, the museum has researched every day and festive life, including carnival customs in Slovene ethnic areas. The carnival heritage, which is an expression of cultural diversity and creativity, is passed on from one generation to the next in a constant creative process. In the countryside, carnival masks summon spring and drive away everything bad that happened in the past year. In addition to the carnival holiday, many local carnival customs have survived in Slovenia. 
Carnival customs are considered as intangible cultural heritage. And the Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage, accepted by UNESCO in 2003, is intended to contribute to the better safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage, to promote respect for such heritage, to raise awareness of its importance and to guarantee international cooperation and support. The convention includes carnival customs among intangible cultural heritage. Since 2011, the Slovene Ethnographic Museum, as the national coordinator for the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage, takes care for the implementation of this UNESCO convention. And one of the tasks of the coordinator is also the creation of a national register where various cultural heritage is collected. Here we have different domains and the first one is oral traditions and expressions, including language as a vehicle of the intangible cultural heritage, second uh, performing arts, then we have social practices, rituals and festive events, the fourth is knowledge and practices concerning nature and the universe, and the last one are traditional craftsmanships. And since the museum has been involved with implementation of the UNESCO Convention, we have established many links with heritage bearers. The result is that the National Register now contains 89 elements and more than 200 bearers of intangible cultural heritage. And 14 elements included in the register are traditional carnival customs. Slovenia was also successful with the inscription of four elements in the UNESCO representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. The first element was Škofjeluka Passion play, play. It was inscribed in 2016. One year later, the door-to-door -door round of Kurenti. And then in 2018, we inscribed bobbin lace making in Slovenia and the art of dry stone walling, knowledge and techniques. Every element in the National Register is presented with a descriptive text based on fieldwork, examination of sources and cooperation with bearers. For each element, we also present the bearers. That means individuals, different organizations, municipalities, informal groups and so on. In addition, the bearers who preserve the heritage are given special place. As you can see, there is a text about carnival group Ravenski Pustovi, how we work in the field, and of course, the most important thing is young generation of children who identify with heritage. I should emphasize that the National Register is merely a specialist record of living intangible cultural heritage, which has no legal or financial implications. Nevertheless, to the bearers, inclusion in the Register is of great importance, above all because it signifies recognition of their heritage by the experts. Researching and documenting intangible cultural heritage has been part of the curator's work at our museum for almost a century. For example, the museum documentation contains the extremely rich legacy of oral steam, which from 1948 to 1962, collected testimony on rural culture in the Slovene countryside. Here you can see the photo 
of curators working in the field, taking notes and also making some movies. We still have a rich photographic collection, nodes and objects from that period, which are important, important witnesses of their time. In those days, museum also bought carnival masks. Some of these are the oldest surviving ones in Slovenia and are thus an important source for research. As you can see, here are two very old masks of Cirkno Laufari that we are keeping in our museum and also an old photo from 1963 of Cirkno Laufari. In Slovenia there are numerous small carnival celebrations which involve and are aimed at the local population. Curators regularly document this and make contact with people in the field, which represents merely the beginning of our cooperation. People are very interested in the objects that their predecessors handed over to the museum. I would like to present an example of good cooperation between the museum and bearers, which was benefited us all. Eleven years ago, on Carnival Saturday, I went for the first time to Shkoromatia in the Burkini area. A year later, they turned to me as they had heard that we are keeping their oldest carnival mask, which was purchased in 1956. We arrange for them to have a look at the objects in the museum storage. In 2012, I prepared a text on the carnival custom of Skoromatia for inclusion in the National Register and the local people were included as heritage bearers. Three years ago, similar to six years ago, the museum bought from the Skoromati from that village five complete carnival outfits. Our cooperation a year later, when we put on display at carnival time nine Skoromat outfits, four old ones and five new. On 8th February, Slovenia's National Day of Culture, the opening of the museum was honored with the presence of Skoromati, their families, local people and even local priest. For their local community, this was an important and emotional event, as some of them saw, after more than 50 years, the carnival outfits that they used to wear. We exhibited their carnival heritage, which awoke many feelings we collected numerous stories and documented the carnival customs of today. This is a good example of how cooperation between the museum and bearers can be of benefit to everyone involved. However, often the museum as coordinator encounters bearers who want only recognition and confirmation of their heritage. Such an example was when the Curenti were preparing a nomination for inclusion on UNESCO's representative list and the Slovene Ethnographic Museum offered its expertise and knowledge of UNESCO guidelines to assist with preparation of the nomination. The aim of some of those involved was merely to get the UNESCO badge. But I have to expose that the Kurentovanie is not inscribed at the UNESCO representative list, but the element door-to-door -door round of Kurenti. And we will watch the movie later. 
In spite of considerable level of disagreement, we eventually submitted a nomination which resulted in successful inscription on the UNESCO representative list. This example confirms that our role as the national coordinator can sometimes be regarded merely as a service for the achievement of certain goals. The greatest advantage or benefit of researching intangible cultural heritage in the field and cooperation with the bearers is mutual trust. This means that you can call people involved without having to explain to them who you are and what you're doing, because they already know this and are aware that we are working to safeguard their cultural heritage. And that heritage is one of the main foundations of identity, local, regional and national. On the basis of mutual trust, we achieve the sharing of knowledge and experience, the loaning or purchase of objects, successful exhibitions and fruitful fieldwork. After a bit long introduction, let me present um, more specific Slovenian traditional carnival customs. Carnival customs represent the extremely varied carnival heritage of Slovenia, which is characterized by small local celebrations and carnivals. These are largely local customs that were once the preserve of men, but now men, women and children dress in traditional carnival outfits and make the rounds of their own and neighboring villages. They wish locals a good and fruitful harvest and make a lot of noise to drive away all the bad aspects of the previous year. In some places, carnival preparations begin as early as December, while carnival time begins on Candle Mass, 2nd February, and lasts right until Ash Wednesday, when Lent begins. The vitality of intangible cultural heritage is the driving force that carries customs, habits, knowledge and skills from one generation to another. And yet, just as our way of life changes, intangible cultural heritage also changes as can be seen with some carnival customs. Also, of course, not all. At one time, only unmarried men wore carnival masks, as, it's, as is still the case with the male groups at the Raune and Drezhnishki carnivals. Elsewhere, married men also dress up, but women are not allowed to take part, as, for example, with the Hrushica Škoromati. But in the case of the Kurenti, the most numerous carnival figure in Slovenia, they can be unmarried or married men, women or children, both boys and girls. For the safeguarding of carnival traditions in Slovenia, it's not only the ones who are masked that matter, but an important role is played by girls and women, for they are the ones who knit socks, make flowers from paper, sew costumes and so on. Also, the number of carnivals in Slovenia, which carnival groups participate as guests, is on the increase. The presence of carnival figures in home villages, in local parades or rounds, is the most important part of Carnival. It is then that locals open their doors to carnival groups and offer them food, drink and gifts. In the past, carnival groups were given eggs, sausages and rarely money. Today, they get eggs and sausages from the master or mistress of the house, but mostly money for their visit. Carnival customs are part of the whole local community which keeps the heritage vital and preserves it.
the carnival custom in Cirkno, named Lauferia, and Lauferia comes from the German word Laufen, that means to run, is a carnival event in the town of Cirkno, involving figures for, known as Laufari, with characteristic wooden masks made from one piece of wood. It includes caroling, a Sunday parade through the streets and the reading of the indictment of Carnival, as well as searching for a wooden mallet and at the end the execution of Carnival on Tuesday. They execute the Carnival with wooden mallet. Here we can see how they are searching for a wooden mallet. And here is the group of Cirkno Lauferi 60, 70 years ago. Carnival marriage to a pine tree is a custom from Prekmuria region, known also in Hungary and Austria, with local variations. Called Borovo Gostuveni, or Pine Wedding is a characteristic carnival event and uh, the symbolic, symbolic marriage to a pine tree involves both a wedding and carnival masks. At first, the Borovo Gustuvanie took place only in villages where no marriages were taking place before carnival time. In Slovenia, carnival plugmen have a long tradition and carnival plugging is found elsewhere in Europe. The phenomenon appears at carnival time in Slovenske Gorice, Haloze and the Ptuj and Drava plains, as well as the Pohorje hillsides. Both written and oral sources attest to the large number of Plugmen in the past. Carnival plugmen do their rounds between Carnival Saturday and Carnival Tuesday. The group is most often made of a cracker, a hag, one or two pairs of nags, a plugger, some currenty, and a musician. In the yard in front of the house, they plug a symbolic furrow and sow seeds for a good harvest, then the locals provide them with food, drink and gifts. This group on the photo is recognizable because of the current masks. While most other such masks are made from sheepskin, these are made of rabbit skins or of goat skins. Skoromatia is a carnival custom on the southern edge of the Burkini Hills and around Podgrad. On St. Stephen's Day, 26th of December, men and boys gather, roles are distributed and the organization of the Skoromatia is agreed. The main event involves collecting around local village. They gather in the middle of the village and then set off on their tour. The Poberin, collector, and the Skoromat with bells separate from the main group and go from house to house collecting gifts. They enter the houses uncovered so that the householders know who has come and they ask if they have anything for the Skoromati. Then they thank them for the presents we wish them all the best for the coming year and take their leave. Meanwhile, the main group goes through the village, acting the fool, stopping at houses, making merry dancing with local women and eating and drinking what the villagers have prepared for them. On Ash Wednesday, the carnival figure of Pust is taken to the edge of the village and burned.
These rituals and events take place at carnival time in villages Drežnica, Drežniške Ravne, Jezerca and Magost. The main figures involved are the ugly ones who chase youngsters and cover them with ashes and the beautiful ones who visit homes to receive gifts and to dance. The tradition, which according to village elders, represents an ancient pagan wedding, has been performed for more than a hundred years. And every year, a week before Carnival Saturday and on Carnival Saturday, two different groups, um, the unmarried adult men from these villages and who are a part of a boys' community put on their masks. Induction into boys' community takes place in December, during one of the last Saturdays of the year, where the young men divvy up the roles to be played during carnival. A procession is divided into three parts, the beautiful ones, the ugly ones, and those with special tasks. Here we can see the beautiful ones. The procession of the beautiful ones consists of a driver of the procession, an accordionist, drummer, the beautiful two representing a bridge, bride and a groom, and the elderly two representing the mother and papa of all carnival events. The main task of the ugly one is to chase children so the procession of the beautiful ones can visit homes undisturbed. Specific tasks are performed by the gendarme, robber, Rezian, hunter, a peasant and his wife, and the bearer of the straw one. Then we have death. During carnival, nobody must know who is wearing which mask. This is why their faces are covered all the time, except for when the beautiful ones tie enter a house. Then they may unwill their faces. They visit all the houses in each village, except for those houses where somebody has died during the current year. The procession through villages concludes with a performance on a square. In the evening of Carnival Tuesday, they bury Shrotite. Shel Maria is a carnival custom event of Kosanjevica na Krki that takes place between Shrove Sunday and Ash Wednesday. And all the characters known as Shilmari are members of the Perforzen House Carnival Association, whilst the symbol of carnival is a metal hat called Shilma. The carnival group of Verbica consists of white and black characters with leather masks. The most typical characters are the white and black hunter. On the carnival Sunday, the group performs in Verbica and Ilirska Bistrica. On Tuesday, they go around the houses collecting gifts and on Ash Wednesday, they ceremonially burn the carnival. The carnival group from Zagorica near Dobre Polje performs carnival custom with elements of folk theatre. On Shrove Sunday morning, this group of typical carnival characters goes around houses collecting gifts. In the afternoon, they stage the wedding, woman's meal, sewing of the woman and plugging. Ponikve Machkare represent a carnival custom with elements of theater in Ponikve near Dobre Polje. On Shrove Tuesday, 
the community of young men go from door to door collecting and put on a humorous program. Then they have an evening dance around the houses and a party and on Ash Wednesday they burning a carnival figure. Mozilla Carnival is the collective name for the carnival figures and costumes present in Mozilla in the Savinia Valley from Mandri to Thursday to Ash Wednesday. The carnival rounds of mowers, plugmen and wedding guests is a carnival custom in the village of Lochenir Dopova. On Shrove Tuesday, a group of seven costumed children goes round the village. In the early morning, they are dressed as mowers, then they become plugmen, and in the afternoon, Shrove Tide wedding guests. This is one of the few traditional groups that consists only of children, and it used to be only boys. Pulling the plank is the carnival custom that is extended in three different regions in Slovenia. Pulling the plank is a carnival custom that symbolizes marriage and is staged when during the pre-carnival period or the previous year no local girl has got married. This photo is from Shairska region and it is preserved in some villages in Gorenska, this one, this one, Shairska and Koroška. And here are two old photos from pulling the plank in Gorenska region. Lig Carnival is the carnival custom in the Kanalski Kolovrat area and is known for its main figures such as the beautiful ones and the ugly ones with masks of beaten aluminium. On Carnival Sunday, homesteads of seven villages are visited by Liški Pustje. And that's what we're seeing here are the beautiful ones. The last carnival custom in my presentation is door-to-door -door rounds of currency that are practiced from Candlemas, 2nd February to Ash Wednesday. Currency practice their rounds through villages and nowadays also through the town of Ptui. Groups consisting of Kurenti and one or more devils run from house to house from a circle in the yard, form a circle in the yard and jump around the owners. According to their beliefs, the noisy bell ringing and brandishing of the wooden stick chase everything evil away and bring happiness to those they visit. Men, women and children are actively involved in all activities associated with the custom. Carnival Kurentovanie celebrated its 60th anniversary last year. Kurentovanie strongly influenced the development of the current carnival mask and the custom. One of the consequences is also that the current is more numerous than any other traditional carnival figure in Slovenia. The current mask is exhibited in all parts of the world in various museums. And also, Festival Cleveland Kurentovanie is one of the reflections of the impact 
of Korintovanje in Slovenia. However, this year the Ptuj Korintovanje will take place via online channels. The motto of this year's edition of Korintovanje in Slovenia is Respect Tradition, Rekindle Memories. And to conclude, the similarities and differences between customs in Slovenia are visible at every step. The customs are also constantly changing, adapting to current conditions. This confirms their presence and vitality as important elements in preserving carnival traditions and ensuring the feeling of identity of the bearers and their community. As I have already mentioned, the door-to-door -door rounds of currency were inscribed on the UNESCO representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2017. At that time, they also prepared a short film video where they presented their tradition. I suggest we take a look at it for the end. Door rounds of Kurenti, one of the mysterious and specific ancient rites, has been preserved in the east northern part of a tiny country called Slovenia. Is current of a pagan, Slavic, or perhaps even Illyrian origin? We still do not know it. The current's outfit comprises a furry cap and a furry coat held by a belt from which hang five cowbells. The outfit is passed down from father to son. Each year, the cap needs to be decorated anew with colored paper ribbons and flowers, carefully made by sisters, girlfriends and mothers. A special pattern, known and shared only by women, is used to make a woolen, green or red socks. Local producers of Kuren's outfits get busy every year, for after the carnival, many of the outfits need to be repaired as a result of a strenuous and active chasing of evil and announcing happiness and good luck. že od malih nog na sjata na dušu na to. Zdaj pa že to moj sin to ne preizdaluje. Tu se uničijo stranska perjesa, ki so potrošni materijal in pa lahko se tudi kožo hrastrga znotraj. Every current gets dressed at home and only then joins different groups of currents. Traditionally, currents begin their rounds on the same February, on the day of Candle Mass, and end them on Shrove Tuesday, which is a different day every year, as the carnival depends on the lunar and not on the Gregorian calendar. During their rounds, currents come to almost every house. In general, they are greeted by a landlord who is waiting for them at the threshold of his farm, and by a landlady. They both shake hands with the currents. One of the culinary specialities during the carnival time is the so-called krof, a donut. However, a dance with a current is a special favor granted only to young women. In return, they present currents with a handkerchief, tying it onto a current's wooden club. Then, a clay pot is broken in front of currents 
in order to call for abundant crops, healthy animals and genuine human feelings governing relations between neighbors. Thus, the landlady hangs a pair of sausages on the Kuren's wooden club, bids the group to enter the house and helps them to donuts and a glass of home-produced wine. A devil, who reminds everybody of the negative side of a human nature, accompanies Kuren's during their rounds. Mischievous as it is, it cannot help itself but to steal a dainty here and there. Two, three years, the gym, watch, plush, cup a little dalje. In the past, it's a big Ma kako što na novo idejo. Za menja milko jo prerastem. Pravi korant, tak tu dole, s totega polja. Ma korant v opravo notri poleg crkvena gvanta. Če vam to kaj pomene, se pravi, kak čuva crkveni gvant ali pa poročno obleko, tak mora korantijo čuvat. Tudi 7, 8 do 10 let jo lahko imamo. The hilly part of our region called Haluze is known for their own version of a current. The so-called horned currents wear genuine cow horns on their caps, but the rest of the outfit is the same. So their rides and rounds have the same meaning. That is, a landlord and a lady greet the currents in front of the house, shake hands with them and present a small gift to show their gratitude for the happiness they bring and abundant crops they announce. A landlady offers to the responsible of a group a pair of sausages. Why some persons become current and want to nurture and cherish the right? Let us listen to some of them what they have to say about it. Prvo, kaj sem bil, sem bil orač, ki korant je naši izhajal iz skupine oračov. Sem bil kojič tam, ko sem bil dovolj velik, pa sem postal korant, tako da sem korant že nekaj okrog. Desetega leta. Na duši so nas ti starejši ljudje, ki so doma izdelovali kape, maske. Mi otroci smo bili zmeraj zdrave njih, izdelovali te rože, koliko smo bili sposobni te kot otroci. Tako da je to bil v celi vasi tisti čas od svečnice pa do pusta nekje v naših krvi, kako bi vam to povedal, glavnem, s tem smo živeli v tem času v zimskem. Kaj čutim o to, se človek se nastavno spremeni, ko si korant, je to, jaz mislim, ena čist nekaj drugega, nič več ne boli, vse gre, tako da, to je demonska maska in pod tem se počutiš nekje, čisto kot en pravi korant. Ja, vse skupaj se je začelo z eno šalo in provokacijo, pravzaprav čez morem, Jaz smo pravi moj boter srečko, me je pripeljal v društvo, celi dan so me gonili po lancu v vasi, zdržal sem in potem so rekli, zdaj pa boš tako stal, zdaj si naš in to je bilo pred nekaj leti nazaj. In sem se zmeraj tukaj. V bistvu je en posebno občutek, neke moči in ne vem, nadnaravne energije, ko se pokriješ z masko, takrat mogoče res prenehaš biti tisti običajni človek in postaneš korant nadnaravno bitje. Ja, jaz pa sem postal korant tako, da me je moj dedek navdušil za korantijo. Ko sem bil star pet let, me je sav vzel na ptujski karnaval, me je tudi kupil korantijo in sem postal tako korant. Ko na denem korantom malo sko občutim nekaj močnega, nekaj, kar se ne da opisati. Naprimer, to mora vsak poskusiti, potem to doživi, ker se ne da za eno besedo opisati. Ja, moj dedek je bil kot ječen za prijoračih, od tam tudi mi izviramo. Moj dedek je bil bolan še s celo leto, ko pa se je približal fašenk, pa ga več jega nič ni bolelo in je šel po vase. The everyday rhythm of running around the whole day, wearing a cap and a coat, 
normally made of at least seven sheepskins, some 20 or 30 additional kilograms of bells, well, this is for the fittest of men and boys. But knowing that their doing brings luck and happiness to everybody else, they persist in making their rounds, and although tired, they are grateful to the winter which helps the nature to rest. And once the already tired currents take off their coats, the nature bids goodbye to winter and thus answer the current's call. And their coats are ready to be put again next year to help the entire cycle of nature start anew. Hi Adela. Hi Nicole. How are you? Um, I'm fine, thank you. How Good. Are you? Good. Thank you for that fantastic presentation. That was great and it was so interesting to see all of the different kinds of traditional um, costumes and traditions that were being used in, in the villages all over the country. So that thank you. Um, so we have our Q&A right now. And again, I'd like to invite our viewers um, on YouTube and Facebook, if you have any questions for Adela, who's live from Slovenia right now with me here, to please put your questions in the comments and we will get those to her. Um, to start off, your, um, your job is so cool, I think. Um, can you talk a little bit about how it became your profession to research and document these um, traditional carnival uh, costumes and traditions in Slovenia and uh, talk a little bit about how you got started in this uh, as a profession. Well, um, I'm working in the Slovenian Ethnographic Museum for 12 years and when I came to museum, I got the Department for Spiritual Culture and that includes also carnival mask and carnival customs. So when I uh, started, I was like scared, like, wow, do I really have to research this thing? And then um, two of my colleagues, they took me um, to the field and we went together and I was like, wow, it's amazing. And then um, from that time on every year I'm waiting for the carnival time to begin and I was so optimistic till I don't know one week ago that we will have the opportunity to go to the field also this year especially because of the pandemic uh, that's also very um, stressful in Slovenia so um, after all these years uh, working in the field I, I have to confess that um, Actually, I have already friends all over Slovenia and um, maybe just to, to tell you last Saturday, the Raune Pustovi, uh, they had the carnival time, they went door to door in their villages and when I called them a week ago, like, hi, Adila's calling, um, what What's going on this year? Are you going to have door-to-door -door rounds or not? And they asked me, are you calling as Adela Pukal, the curator from the museum? And I said, actually, I do. And I said, no, we don't have. And then I was like, okay, <laughs> if I'm calling as your friend, and they said, okay, in this case, you're welcome. <laughs> but um, then something, I don't know how it happened at the end this Saturday because I heard that they, they got an inspector with the police and everything else so I don't know how it end at the end so um, uh, but I will um, ask them definitely um, on the topic of coronavirus and the impact that it's having on the carnival season right now in Slovenia can you talk a little bit about in general um, what what's happening with you and uh, people there? Uh, well, um, the Slovenia is actually, it was locked down from 13 November last year, so it's already three months. Um, so nothing 
no um, carnivals, no festivals, nothing's going on live right now. So um, after many decades, the carnival tradition will be interrupted this year because of the coronavirus. Um, this year is very special um, because the epidemic strongly marked the carnival time and especially the carnival processions of traditional carnival groups in their home villages. Um, for carnivals, which are kind of a tourist event, um, I can say that they have a adapted to the situation and uh, they use online events, thus keeping in touch with visitors and keeping the event alive. But however, uh, there is no such adaptation in traditional carnival intended for locals as the bearers of this heritage stick to tradition and uh, do not want their heritage to be transferred to the virtual world and become impersonal. because. When they walking through the villages from house to house, personal personal presence, contact with the locals, and strength, strengthening uh, the identity of the place is important. And uh, this is unfortunately not possible virtually. You had made mention of you know some of the the larger festivals are going online, while some of the local traditional customs are just not adapt it, it, they're not going to go virtual. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between these large festivals and the local traditions? I think for context, um, most people are aware of Kurantavanya in Patui, which is a huge festival. Um, of course, in your video, we were seeing many of the smaller traditions in the, the smaller villages throughout the country. Can you talk a little bit about the difference in what those two celebrations uh, of Carnival are like and how they're different? Uh, well, the, the biggest difference between these traditional Carnivals is that, um, and, and the Carnivals as festivals, is that um, the first ones are for the villagers. That means that people are dressed in different costumes, different masks, traditional for that villages. And they go from house to house. They knock on the door and the people are um, accepting them, inviting them. They give them food and they bring luck to the house. Uh, so this means that this is the very important element of the local identity. And on the other side, the um, carnivals as festivals, um, they are more for tourists, so that means like in bigger cities, they invite different kind of carnival groups, traditional ones, and these ones, for example, school groups, kindergarten groups, or just groups of people who dress in some actual um, masks, and then they just go through the city or town, and present their masks. So people are standing on the both side of the road watching and the, 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 the whole procession goes by. So there is no this personal contact as I was saying before. That's great. And I think that's really important to understand here in, in our, um, our context uh, as well. So thank you for elaborating on that. We have some questions here from our viewers on um, Facebook. Um, one person is asking, do you know how long it takes for a current costume to be made? I don't know exactly, uh, but I think they definitely need more than two or three weeks to, to, to do it. And there is one uh, man in the um, region of Ptui, he's working this um, Kurentia, and you can order it there. So you can come just there and say, I'll take this one, but you have to order in advance and they um, can make it for you. And if you, so you had talked about one person, but my understanding is that m uh, many people will make them themselves. Is that... Is that right? Actually, no. In the past, uh, people put on everything they found at home. So if they had the jacket, they just turn it around, 
put it on, uh, take the bells from cows and just running around. So um, actually the current in the past was some um, very um, uh, awful creature. Um, but now actually we can say that they are like very beautiful. <laughs> so um, people are going to these uh, craftsmen in Ptui and they order their curantia. Great. We have another um, question on a somewhat similar topic. When did women start wearing the current costume and um, basically acknowledging that previously uh, we only saw men wearing it? Do you know when that started and can you talk a little bit about that? Actually, I don't know exactly when it started, but definitely um, I would say that till the middle of 20th century, actually the men were wearing the masks. And um, last year it was the 60th Kurentovanie in Slovenia. And I think that the Kurentovanie has a really strong impact. And um, I think that in 60s, 70s also, or maybe a, a little bit later, the women started to dress as Kurenti and uh, also uh, children. And um, uh, last year when I was in the field, I actually um, saw a group of Kurenti uh, only um, consisting of women. So um, it's uh, just a group of women wearing uh, Kurenti. That's really cool. And um, we have some other questions about Mascarada and Pust. Um, throughout the country with all of these different celebrations, some in the villages, some in bigger cities going on, essentially at the same time. Um, does there seem to be any competition between those different celebrations and festivals, um, or are they incorporated together in some way? Um, maybe we can say there is a competition between them, but I think that the, these uh, groups of uh, different carnival uh, masks uh, they know exactly for every year where, um, for example, for them is the most important thing to do their rounds in their village. So this is the essential thing. And then they think where to go. Um, and I think that the groups are um, going to different kind of, uh, to different carnivals, festivals in Slovenia. Um, one reason can be because they go every year there. The second one can be, okay, at that festival we haven't been yet, so next year we go there. And um, I also see that the, the groups are um, doing their uh, round uh, from house to house in their own village even a week before the carnival time, just because they have time to go to different festivals because I, I think that the very important thing is for these people not just staying in their own village it is the most important thing but they also like to go to different carnivals to show their heritage and also to to know and meet other carnival groups thank you um, let's see here we have a question also from Facebook is the current jump um, widespread in the country or is it specific only to a specific region, maybe Patui? Current uh, I think it has uh, almost 20 years of tradition, so it's quite new tradition. And they actually some people decided to start with current jump uh, just to say okay the second February we will start the carnival time and um, it's only on second February at the midnight at the Dumachia of one of the currents uh, near Ptui 
and uh, it's only at this place. And actually, a lot of Kurinti, uh, they come there. They're not wearing uh, the whole Kurintia at the time. They're just wearing um, bells. And so it's uh, they're jumping around the fire. So everything is like 15 minutes and um, some party and then going home. And next day, they, some of the groups already start their traveling around Slovenia, sometimes the world, um, or just their own village. Thank you. Um, what are your thoughts on Cleveland's version of Karantavanya? Uh, well, as you mentioned in the beginning, it was actually already four years ago that I was uh, in Cleveland to Karantavanya. And the, my first th thought at that time was like, what are you doing in Cleveland and Kurentovania and so on? Um, I was a bit negative in this way, but um, now I must say that um, it was a really, really special feeling being there, um, seeing all these currents. You have 10 or 20 currents, right? Um, uh, and I think you're doing a good thing for... Um, our cultural heritage and um, even if the current is the most um, we have about 2000 currents in Slovenia I still think it's important that you have some kind of festival that's connected to the carnival time and that um, the tradition is also alive in, um, in Cleveland Thank you for that Yeah, I mean, in total transparency we have gotten some pushback from people in Slovenia saying exactly what you said. Why would you have it here? Why is it outside of Slovenia? And I think that, you know, certainly our form of celebrating this event is much different than what happens in Slovenia. We are in a city um, that is not full of Slovenian people who would be welcoming people knocking on their door <laughs> and trying to come in their house. and. We, you know, have just different circumstances here. Um, but I think you are right. It is a very special feeling here. Um, we have celebrated this more as like a, a, it ends up being like a Slovenian cultural week in a lot of ways, um, as well as the actual celebration of the carnival season. Um, May I just add something? I, I wouldn't say that the, the Kurentovani in Cleveland is so different to the Kurentovani in Ptui. Maybe it's not Slovenia, that's right. But on the other hand, Ptui is a town. And the, all the men that are coming to Kurentovani, Kurentovani is not the thing when Kurenti are going door to door. This is something totally different. So the Kurentovani is a touristic attraction, it's a festival. And, peop and the masks are going on the streets. The same thing as in Cleveland. You had bands, they have bands playing. You have food and drinks, and they have food and drinks. So I don't think there is a big difference in the concept. I'm not saying that they are having um, international parade with, I don't know, masks from all over the world, and they have an ethno parade that with, I don't know, 900 currents coming from the whole Slovenia. That's all true. But the concept is, it's my opinion, it's quite the same. Thank you. And thanks for everybody who's sending your questions in on Facebook and YouTube. Um, we're trying to get through as many as we can here. This one's from Connor on YouTube. Um, can you talk about the importance of carnival traditions to the Slovenian diaspora, for example, in Cleveland? And are there other places outside of Slovenia where Kurentovania or carnival celebrations are celebrated uh, in this way? Um, I, I don't think so. I, I'm, as much as I know, uh, the current the the Kurentovanya is in Cleveland and in Ptui, and I don't know if any other um, Slovenian community outside the 
Republic of Slovenia um, is so strong and if they have something like this. Maybe they have one current or two just like like a personal for personal use. But um, the festivals, the carnival festivals are all over the Europe um, and the big ones, very interesting ones. But um, about the Slovenian carnival tradition, um, I don't have the information that everywhere else would uh, happening something like that. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Slovenian Ethnographic Museum in general and what this museum is about in the other kinds of work that is being done at the museum? Um, yeah, well, Slovenian Ethnographic Museum. Um, in our museum, we have a Slovenian collections and non-European collections. That means that um, we don't have any collection. We have some museum objects about from different European countries, but actually we have our culture, so that means Slovenian ones, and the non-European, so America, Africa, Australia, and so on. And we uh, we have five different departments. That means I have um, I'm curator of a spiritual um, department for spiritual culture. Then we have a department for textiles and um, craftsmanships, um, art, and so on. So we are trying to research all the fields. Uh, of uh, et ethnology, actually, our uh, everyday life and festive life. Um, we have in our um, exhibition building, uh, as you saw it in the beginning of my presentation, we have two permanent exhibitions. One is uh, between nature and culture, where we're trying to show how people lived in an um, everyday life, in a festive life in the past with a lot of museum objects. Then we have uh, the second one, uh, the second permanent exhibition is about, is the title is I, We and the Others. This is the exhibition about, um, uh, um, uh, how, about our relations between people, relations to the museum, uh, to the objects we are keeping and so on. And then we also have a place for different um, temporary exhibitions. And right now we have a temporary exhibition about the uh, carnival plugmen in Slovenia. Great. Um, we have a couple more questions and then we're going to start wrapping it up. And I want to thank everybody who's joined us tonight. And we have had so many questions coming in from Facebook and YouTube. So thank you for that. Um, a couple more questions for you on a personal level. What is your favorite um, carnival tradition and how is your how does your family normally celebrate? Uh, and how are you guys planning on celebrating this year given some of the coronavirus restrictions in place? It's hard to say which one is my favorite uh, carnival custom, so I, I'm not going to answer this question. Um, I, I really, I, I, I like this lo small local traditional uh, carnivals where these local people are there. I'm as a curator and it's a small group of people. Uh, I don't like that much uh, all these carnival festivals, but um, this is also part of my job, so I actually have to 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 do it. Uh, it's not that bad at all. Um, my children, actually, my son is 10 years old, and he asked me one year ago, like, "Mom, can you please buy me a curentia?" And I was like, "No, not at all." And he was like, why not? And I said, you know, we live near Ljubljana, so this is the central part of Slovenia, and this is the um, western, uh, eastern part of Slovenia. So if we would live there, I would buy Kurentia, but in this case, 
I'm not going to. Uh, so he understood. So uh, my children are all these um, Star Wars and um, Fortnite fans, uh, princesses and policemen. So like a classical um, carnival masks. Um, did I answer the question? <laughs> yeah. Well, how are you? Tell us a little bit about given that you have the lockdown in place, what does that mean for how you will be able to celebrate this year and how will that af affect your research? Because I know normally you would right now be probably getting in your car and driving to some village um, to observe and document their, the carnival festival. Yeah. yeah. I think this was, this will be for the first year of my research career that I will actually stay at home. And um, we still don't know if they will open the schools for children um, older than nine years. So um, I think for children is interesting if they can share their experience being um, some carnival mask. Um, some um, figure, some carnival figure, and um, that's why we actually were waiting, uh, we as a family, what is going to happen in this carnival time. So probably we will just um, have to find some old um, masks in our closet. So, um, but yeah, unfortunately this year, Nothing's going to happen, or I can sit um, at my computer and everything is going to be online. One last question here. Um, does your department have a catalog log of masks that are in the museum, and where exactly is your mu museum located? Uh, Slovene Ethnographic Museum is located um, near the central um, bus and train station in the capital of Ljubljana. And yes, we have the catalog of all museum objects. Uh, so um, with all the information we are dealing with, that means like the name, the time when the mask was made or the museum object was made, where it's coming from, and we are also trying to collect as much stories about one object we can get. I could talk to you all day about this topic, and I love your passion for um, carnival, Slovenian traditions uh, surrounding them, and Kurentavanya. I want to thank you so very much for putting together such a fantastic presentation and for joining us for our Q&A here. This has been great. And um, on behalf of everybody here in Cleveland, thank you so much. And I'd like to invite our viewers, um, if you would like to revisit or share this presentation, it will be available on Facebook Live and our YouTube channels. So you can revisit and uh, share this as you wish. Please stay tuned. We're going to take a short break. And we'll be back at 7.30 PM Eastern Standard Time, so in about 15 minutes here, for our second presentation of the night on uh, Slovenian dual citizenship. Um, again, Adela, thank you so much. It's been a tremendous pleasure. And um, have a great carnival season, even if you're at home. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for inviting me. And I really hope that the uh, Kurentovania in Cleveland next time will be live again in the streets of Cleveland with the beer in the hands and dancing all night long. Uh, greetings from Slovenia. Good night and hope to see you next year. Thank you so much. I hope to see you next year too. Bye.